let, let's talk about our mutual friends, uh, you know, Dissa and Duran. <laughs> like, um, you know, I was just uh, talking to Peter and he was saying, first off, he was extremely complimentary of you two. But like some of those scenes that you, you know, that you have, you guys really go for it. You kind of get the feeling that there's been a lot of resentment between father and son for a while. How is it having Peter as a scene partner? Oh, my life. It, he's he's just he's a gift of a man. I can't I I I I'm I feel so fortunate to uh, to have had that time with him. Uh, he's so generous with um, his input. Um, he had a great analogy the other day. He said, "You be the lamp, and I'll be the lampshade, or I'll be the lamp, and you be the lampshade, and then we'll create something." You know, and and it's so true. It's so true. What what, what that is how he. Uh, uh, approaches life, I think. He's such a darling. And um, we, um, it was just great. He's so present in the moment mm -hmm. that we didn't really have much of a discussion before going on to set. It's um, it's all written down, you know, what the scene is, what the clash is, and, and we explored it in the moment. So um, uh, every take was different. Each, you know, the... Our responses to each other that that was was different every time, and it was we were just playing, and it was heartbreaking and wonderful at the same time. Um, they, there's there's clear when you when you look into Peter's eye that you just see all the history, you just see all of Dud in there, and 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 he gives you so much that that you just you just want to be there with him the whole entire time. Um, and yeah, I feel like I've I feel like I've gone through a lot with Peter, you know, because our characters clash, love each other so much, and 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 respect e e each other, and disrespect each other at the same time as well, and everything I think is through love and uh, and respect, and it was just a pleasure, just an honour. I mean, how lucky am I to have Peter Mullen as my father? You know, it was just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's a gift. Sophia, uh, you know, the most vulnerable emotionally that we ever see the dwarves this season is your song. Like that's the one time they allow themselves to mourn and to hope and everything. Walk me through that that scene as you know, you're delivering this song following the uh following the claps. Yeah, it um it, it was one of the most incredible moments of the season for me and actually my my career, quite frankly, because it was one of those rare moments that's completely under-rehearsed prior, meaning that everything that we got, we got on the day. So I remember the incredible Bear McCreary who had it, who who worked on it with me after the after we'd shot it. Um, he kind of revealed a secret to me that said we went into post afterwards, so we did like some work on it in post. And he said, actually, the day that we worked on it in post none of that got into the show because the best takes that we have were the takes that you did on, on set live. The whole thing was performed live for like 10 hours straight for that shoot day. And, um, and that was the best of it. And actually no one had seen it. And everyone that was um, on set that day or involved in the scene had never seen or heard that before. So what you, what you feel is that authenticity of, Disa working it out and just coming from a place of complete desperation and singing from her soul, um, pulling at whatever resources that she has. But also you see the people surrounding, Elrond included. So Rob made a pact to say that he won't have any eyes or ears on it until the moment. So the shot you see of him hearing it is him hearing it for the very first time. And so it was just one of those moments of gold dust in creativity when it's not it doesn't have any machines around it it just has um a hell of a lot of love and a hell of a lot of passion dwarven passion and creative passion thrown into one room with no words just a voice and um and a story and it was it was very very beautiful very beautiful I'll, I'll not forget it one of the things i love about your guys arc in this season is you don't mind in this 
in this at the beginning of the season, you guys don't mine out of greed. You're mining out of compassion for the elves. And mm-hmm. Disa reminds Durin of his friendship. And, you know, you allow Elrond into your home. How was it kind of forming that that kind of very couple rapport between you two and kind of like, because you do feel quite lived in by the time we first see you together. Mm-hmm. Well, we have been living with each other. <laughs> Right, sometimes two floors. Yeah, <laughs> many cups of tea. That that uh, teas and coffees. That's what. That's what. And I'll say, sandwiches. I'm, I'm sandwiches and roasts. I want to make a killer roast. <laughs> killer sandwiches. We only had one sandwich this season. You, you, <laughs> you do a nice thing for a still. It's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> to that point, yeah, there it is. There's the chemistry. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, in I mean, because yeah, you have the unique, well, you have the unique challenge of filming this during the pandemic. Like, how is it forming that rapport in that bubble? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that that brought the whole world together, and you know, it kind of made you reflect on what's important in your life, what do you need in your life to be satisfied, um, and who needs help as well. You know, you kind of, I think that's that's what's nice about the human nature is that if we are in trouble, we come together. And and that's what we did. Yeah, and, and we had no inhibitions. Like, did we have disagreements? Absolutely. And for me, that only makes you stronger. Like, because you're fearless to be able to... Think. There can be such a... And rightly so, one has to, in our world, in our industry, more so than ever, gauge the boundaries. But luckily, we were able to agree on our line, and that there kind of isn't one really. Well, yeah, and I it, mean, it's, it's, it's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what what that works for everybody has their own process. Everybody has their you know their own relationship lines, etc. But for us, not having that boundary meant we were completely free, and therefore we're kind of functioning like a marriage, don't we? Yeah. Having so much joy and so much love and so much respect and tactileness and gregariousness, these are all traits of the culture of the dwarves. And we could do that in abundance. And equally, get a bit grumpy now and again and sulk a little bit. Yeah, good. That's that's what we need to do, isn't it? Oh, we're getting sound effects with this one. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like your uh, some of your juiciest scenes are directed by Charlotte and Wayne. How is it having them as uh, your directors for this first season? Yeah, I mean, I mean, oh. the, the, Charlotte is is just a, a, an absolute diamond. As is Wayne, is just a wonderful human being. Yes, yeah. um, and so is his partner as well. She's uh, to die for. She's Lydia. lovely. Love her. And they're so different, aren't they? They're just so different, but equally as brilliant. You know, they're, oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're both very different. Wayne is who directed the song, actually, and he was so dedicated, calling me at nine o'clock at night on the keyboard, going, bling, bling, do you think you could, bling, do you think you could hit that note? Can we go a bit up there? You know, like, <laughs> um, he fought for Deesa. I have to, I have to give him a minute because he fought for Deesa in a way that I will never, ever forget. I, I do believe that he is a strong player in Deesa being who she is um, because he was absolutely fearless in the fact that Deesa needed to be united. She could not be a subservient wife in a dwarven mm. culture in this time, in this show. And he pushed for that. And of course, that idea was received really well. But he was always in my ear supporting someone who didn't advocate for themselves very well or would be really frightened to. Um, and he made sure that she was looked after. And that is why we see the Deesa that we do. So I owe him huge um, kudos. And Charlotte is an extraordinary mind who knows exactly what she wants and mm. will fight to the death to get it. So we were very lucky. What's great is that we've got Charlotte again for season two. Yeah. So there's a continuity from, you know, she's lived those moments with us in season one and and, and is able to, 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 to bring that into season two as well. So... We've kind of season one. We've established who we are, where we are, uh, and season, and you know, moving on, we can we can use that. We have that behind us, and as we go forward to season two, and to have Charlotte leading us and kind of pointing us in the right or wrong direction, then then it's uh, it, it's it's a, it's a good recipe. <laughs> yeah, I was, when I was talking to uh, when I was talking to Peter, I was asking him because I had talked to Katie earlier today too. <laughs> And he was saying that he was saying that he finds the performance for Durin the third 
when his makeup is done and he finally gets to have breakfast with such an extensive, such an extensive makeup process for and costuming process. Is there a specific moment where you find the character like as like the wig is going on or any of the the hair? I I, I do actually, yeah. So I've got uh, what they call nose cones, right? So the, so the beard is in a lot of different pieces, and and the prosthetics is the first thing to go on. So but I instantly look like somebody different <laughs> and and then then when the beard goes on and and you know he's he's being built up and i'm looking at myself directly in the mirror as this is happening but it's not until there's the two tiny little bits that I just curl up on there if you if you just have a look at a picture of him um and um the uh yeah the makeup artist just kind of steps back and goes oh there he is <laughs> and then and then it just feels like yeah it's not complete until that last piece of hair is in it's very funny um but i get what he means about the breakfast thing because they are very early starts and yeah. you do feel like you've done a morning's you know worth of work before you've even stepped on to set he was saying yeah i think three o'clock yeah. all times or something like that for <laughs> <you>. <laughs> sophia is there any specific moment for you like with the costume it's the wig and it's the contact lenses mm. as soon as ted goes on she's called ted that is hot off the press, that is. But my but Dee's wig is called Ted. <laughs> and when Ted goes on... <laughs> um, uh, when Ted goes on and the golden eyes go in, she's arrived. She's absolutely arrived. I just see her and feel her in a way that I don't until that's on. And, and I just... I feel so empowered as well. I feel so excited. I'm, I moan a lot because the wig's heavy. But, um, <laughs> in fact, one of the ADs calls me the naughty wee dwarf who wouldn't get dressed because uh, I just refuse to get dressed until the last possible minute because it's really heavy stuff. But yeah, as soon as Ted and the eyes go in, she's what that silk, that silk dress is really heavy, isn't it? It's a big burden for you. I'm going to put that wig on you. Should we wear each other's costume and see yeah. what happens? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's your season two tease. Uh, <laughs> I, I have time for one more. And of course, like... It's Elrond is the one that whose friendship with Durin is so strong he'll disobey his father that that Disa will let him into her home despite the thing between dwarves and elves. How is it uh, having Robert in those scenes with you? Robert, Robert. <laughs> um, I, I think it's safe to say that Rob, Rob and I have uh, the same friendship as Elrond and Durin has. It's quite it's quite something actually that you know. You, you 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 meet someone and then you experience something you you go through you survive something mm -hmm. um we survived season one together you know and and yeah and and therefore you, you kind of there's a sense of achievement and it will forever be there that experience that there was a lot of first firsts that happened and therefore and therefore he will forever be a friend. And, and uh, you know, I've, I've got a soft spot for him in my heart anyway. And if he says any different, he's lying. <laughs> Sophia, anything you want to add about dear Robert? Rob is family. Rob is, Rob is family. Rob, we, we stayed in New Zealand throughout the whole pandemic and Rob was in our bubble. I mean, he lived with myself, my husband and my daughter. Um, my daughter, he is Uncle Bob. To my kid, they shared the first birthday together. They did a cake smashing competition. Uh, the two of them, you know, she thinks that he's the, um, you know, Frozen. You know, Sven is Sven oh, yeah. the, the, so you know, um, the love interest of Anna. Yeah. She thinks that that's him, my kid. Um, <laughs> but uh, we have an, we have an extraordinary bond, and on and off screen, we push boundaries. Um, we he is an extraordinary mind as well. He is our mm. as, as I want to describe him, our Tolkien Wikipedia. You know, you just yeah. ask him a question and he'll know the answer. And yeah. so, and he also brought us together. He did so so much for us, um, and so much for the for that for that this friendship triangle. Um, he is family, and it is an absolute joy working with him because he's an expert in mind, hilarious, and um very passionate about his work and an extraordinary performer so yeah he's a joy i'll call him we'll call him later <laughs> all right well that is my time guys thanks for sitting down with me on a saturday 
Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is available to stream on Prime Video. Can't wait till season two. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Okay.